Okay, well, before we can get Octoprint running on your Orange Pi, first we need to download some software. The first and probably most important being the operating system for your Pi. Uh, I'm a big fan of Armbian. Um, I don't generally use the one that's on Orange Pi's website. Instead, I go and download uh, the one directly from Armbian. So you can find the one for your Pi just by searching Armbian and then the Pi you're using. So in this case, the uh, Orange Pi 1. And uh, you'll see download links for it here. So it also brought up the one for the zero, and then there's a generic orange pie there. So I'm going to snag the one for orange pie one. Okay, so once you get to the Armbian site for your particular orange pie, there's going to be a couple of options. There's the Ubuntu desktop version, which has the legacy kernel, which has the most amount of support for the, uh, for the actual chipset. Then there's the mainline kernel image, which doesn't contain the full driver set and may have bugs. So uh, I generally go with the more stable one, which is the Ubuntu desktop legacy kernel. Um, it also has a UI built into it, so if you want to hook it up to a monitor, you could use it for that. So while that's downloading, the other thing we need to do is download the Win32 disk imager. If you've done any work on an Orange Pi or Raspberry Pi before, then you're probably familiar with the software. This is how we get that image written onto your SD card so that your Pi can boot off of it. Um, so it's available off SourceForge. Uh, searching Win32 Disk Imager in Google uh, will bring you right to their site, and you can just download and install it from there. It's a simple installation. There's no options or anything that you need to configure. Just install it as it is. And then you're going to need something to be able to SSH into the uh, Pi, especially if you want to be able to access it over the network. You do have the option as well to hook it up to a keyboard mouse and uh, to an HDMI display, but generally speaking, being able to SSH into the box is the easiest way to go. Uh, I generally recommend using PuTTY. It's a well-known, well-established piece of software. It's been around since before the year 2000, um, and it can do Telnet and SSH, as well as a bunch of other stuff. So uh, again, just searching PuTTY, the first thing will bring you to PuTTY.org, and you can download PuTTY from the top link. Go ahead and pick the version that's proper for your computer. In this case, I'm running a 64-bit operating system, so might as well grab the 64-bit version. With your Armbian image downloaded, it's time to get it extracted. Uh, I generally use 7-zip. It supports pretty much everything, so just go to the folder where you have your image contained. Right-click on it, click uh, through 7-zip, and do Extract here. This shouldn't take too, too long, and while you're waiting, you can go ahead and run your Win32 disk imager that you installed. With Win32 Disk Imager running, and with your microSD card connected to your computer, go ahead and make sure that you have the right device selected, um, because if you target the wrong one, it's going to erase whatever you pointed at and could corrupt all your data. Then it's time to pick the image file, so go ahead and click the file folder next to the image file text box, and then go ahead and navigate to where you put your Armbian image, select it, and then click right. It's going to give you the warning that whichever drive you target is going to get erased or corrupted and ask if you want to continue, say yes, and then wait. Depending on the speed of your card reader as well as the speed of your card, this could take anywhere from a couple minutes to an hour, so just be patient and let it do its thing. When your write is complete, go ahead and click OK, then eject your card, stick it into your Pi, and connect your Pi to power as well as the network. You're going to have to give it a little while on the first startup to finish doing all of its install processes, and then you should be able to access it over the network. Once your Orange Pi is finished booting up, it should show up on your network. Now, finding out what the IP address can be a little bit tricky, but the easiest way is usually to go to your router. So, if you know the IP address of your router, go ahead and go there and log in. Then on most of them, you should be able to find some spot where it'll give you information on the DHCP table. So in my case, it's under Device Info and then DHCP. And the Orange Pi 1 shows up here, which shows that the IP address for the Orange Pi 1 is currently 192.168.31.109. We'll need that IP address to be able to connect to it in PuTTY. When you run PuTTY, you'll get the PuTTY configuration window that opens, and uh, basically what you need to do is enter the IP address of your Pi. Leave it on port 22, make sure you have SSH selected, and then click Open. And the first time you connect, you will get this warning basically saying that you haven't connected to the server before and we don't know it. Are you sure you want to trust it? Just go ahead and click Yes. Now you'll be connected to the Pi and it's going to ask you for a login and password. So the default login is going to be root, and the default password is going to be 1234. On your first boot in, it's going to ask you to change the password. So first start off by entering the existing password, again, 1234. 
and then set it to a unique password and make sure that you can remember it, otherwise you're going to lock yourself out of your box. Now it's going to ask you to create a regular username, so you can pick whatever you want. Enter a new password again. This is a unique password to the user account that you're creating now. And then the rest of the information you can just leave as is. So once you're in, now it's time to take a look at doing your updates and upgrades. So you can start off with a sudo apt get update. This will update all the sources on the box. Pretty much any time you install a Linux-based operating system, you want to start off by doing this because it makes sure that it's secure, you know, patches over any issues for not only the operating system, but also any installed packages. With the update complete, now it's time to do the upgrade. This is going to be the longer of the two processes, so be prepared to wait anywhere from, you know, 20 minutes to an hour, depending on the speed of your internet connection as well as the speed of your micro SD card. If you get, like I did, any uh, point of resource contention, just issue a reboot command. The box will go down for a couple of minutes as it restarts the operating system, and then you should be ready to go again. Once your box is back up and running, go ahead and log in as root, typing in the password that you changed. And now we can issue our sudo apt get upgrade again. And again, this is going to be the longer of the two processes, so just be patient. As it does its analysis, it's going to tell you how much more storage space it requires to do the upgrade. Just go ahead and say yes. Now with the update complete, it's time to create a user for Octoprint. You can call this user whatever you want, and if you want to call it something other than Octoprint, just swap that wherever you see it uh, in this tutorial. But for me, I'm just going to stick with adding a user called Octoprint. You'll have to create a password for it, but it doesn't really matter what you set to it because it is going to be erased uh, later on in the tutorial. Again, as when we created the user account, you can just leave all that information blank. We'll have to use the user mod command to add some additional access and permissions to the Octoprint account, so we'll go ahead and add TTY using user mod a d TTY Octoprint, as well as dialout. We'll also have to add the Octoprint account to the list of users that has sudo permission, so we'll do a sudo add user Octoprint sudo. Finally, we'll have to edit the sudo config file using the vi-sudo command, or vi-sudo command, so sudo vi-sudo. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, and underneath where you'll see the user account that you created earlier, we're going to basically set up the sudo permissions for Octoprint. Do a control O to save the file, and control X to exit. Finally, we're going to wipe off that password that we set up on the Octoprint account earlier by doing a sudo password octoprint-d. Well, with our user account created, now it's time to set up the software that we need. So this is going to include access to Git, uh, Python, as well as virtual environment, or VM. So you'll sudo apt git install, and again, you'll find that list in the description below. Uh, same as when we did the upgrade, it's going to ask you if you're okay with the amount of extra space it's going to take. Just answer yes. Okay, well now we need to switch to the created user account to be able to finish our install process. So you can do a sudo su, and then in my case octoprint. That'll be whatever user you created. And if at any time you're confused about which user you're currently working under, you can just type a who am I, and it'll tell you. So as you can see, I am currently octoprint. Now let's go ahead and get PySerial 2.7 installed, so we'll switch to our home directory by doing a cd tilde. Then we'll use the wget command to grab the compressed file for PySerial 2.7. Next we're going to need to extract that using the tar command. This will create a directory called PySerial-2.7, so we'll switch to that directory. And then we will use Python to install PySerial. Once that's completed, let's go ahead and get back to our home directory by doing a cd tilde again. Next, we're going to use get to create a clone copy of the latest copy of Octoprint. Once that's done, let's switch to the newly created Octoprint directory, which is going to have a capital O and a capital P. Then let's fire up virtual environment. And then we'll use Python to set up and compile Octoprint on our local machine. This will probably take a few minutes to go through, so just let it do its thing. Now with the install complete, all that's left to do is boot up Octoprint for the first time. So we'll go ahead and issue the serve command. 
and Octoprint should start up. Once the start procedure is complete, you should be able to access your new Octoprint install from your local browser. Once you see the line that says listening on, you should know that it's ready to go. With Octoprint up and waiting for you to connect, all you have to do is switch to your local browser and you'll go ahead and connect to the IP address of your Orange Pi, adding colon 5000 to the end or port 5000. Port 5000 is the default that it'll be listening on. The first time you connect to Octoprint, it is going to walk you through the setup wizard and you're basically going to answer these questions for whatever suits you best. You generally want to configure access control right off the bat, so you'll create a username as well as a password, and that way people will need to enter this username and password before they can have any type of control over your printer. And then you'll click Keep Access Control Enabled. I disable the online connectivity check because there isn't a guarantee that my printers will always be accessible over the internet. The plugin blacklist prevents you from installing plugins that aren't compatible with your current version of Octoprint, as well as if you do an update and it creates an issue with some of your plugins, it'll disable them for you automatically. I generally leave this enabled. If you wanted to configure Cure Engine, you could do that here. Cure Engine allows you to do your slicing directly on the Octoprint, and then you'd be able to import your Cure profile here. Next, you have to enter in the default printer profile. This is going to be the profile for your printer, and it's basically the same as when you set up in your favorite slicer. In server commands, you can enter any advanced server commands, so stuff that you want it to do when you restart, as well as commands for restarting the system and shutting it down. If you want to configure webcam and time-lapse, you would have to install the software separately, and then you would put in the URLs for your webcam access for both your streaming and your snapshots here. And finally, with that, you're finished. Octoprint is all configured and ready to go. All that's left to do is configure your Orange Pi to be able to boot Octoprint when it starts up. Switching back to your PuTTY terminal window, we'll go ahead and press Ctrl Z to end the running of Octoprint. Now we need to do some file copying to the init.d directory. So we'll go ahead and copy the Octoprint init file. Then we're going to have to be able to modify that to be able to be executable. And finally, we will copy the default file as well. Now let's go ahead and edit the default configuration. We're going to have to make a couple changes here. First and foremost, we need to change the user account from Pi to Octoprint. And we have to change the daemon directory as well as make sure that the daemon line is not commented out. So if there is a hashtag in front of it, go ahead and remove that. Then you can remove the existing directory that's listed there. And we're going to switch it to home, octoprint, octoprint, vm, bin, octoprint, keeping in mind that this is case sensitive. We'll do a control O to write it out. Then a control X. Finally, we need to push those updates for the defaults. It may ask you to confirm which identity you'd like to use. You can use uh, basically either of them. Both of them have sudo access, so it should be fine. And then from there, you can do a sudo service octoprint start to start your octoprint as a service. If you're sure you followed all the steps correctly, but you can't get octoprint to start up, then go ahead and do a reboot on the box. And once you're back in, sudo back into the octoprint account switch to the home directory and reissue your copy for the default commands as well as your sudo service octoprint.start and it should come right up. And that should do it. Your Orange Pi Octoprint setup is now ready to rock and roll. If you guys need any more tutorial information, let me know in the comments below. Likewise, if you want to see tutorials on configuring proxies so you don't need to use port 5000, or if you want to see how to set up the webcam, let me know and I will do my best to accommodate. If you have ideas for future tutorials, let me know in the comments below. If uh, you, this video is helpful to you, toss me a thumbs up. If you're new here, then subscribe and click the bell so you're notified when I put out new content. And until next time, stay creative.